Okay, today we have a patient that came in. He was complaining about his ABS system. He didn't mind me giving uh, his name as a 2000 Buick LeSabre. And let's uh, see what his problem is. See if we can find out what's going on. Maybe we can make him feel better. Well, let's turn on Mr. LeSabre and let's see if we have any issues with his ABS. Well, we have a, well, we got a traction light over there on. We got an ABS light on. And we have the brake light on over there. All right, we'll crank them up. Yep, traction light's still on. ABS light's still on. And the brake light's still on. All right, so it looks like he is correct. He does have a little issue. No wonder he's not feeling well. Okay. Let's see if we can see what his problem is here. Let me turn this thing off right now. All right, let's do an auto scan. Let's look at all the modules on this car. Two faults in the ABS unit, nothing surprising there. What do you think? Maybe we ought to give them an aspirin and uh, send them home. Tell them if you don't feel any better in a couple of days, come back. All right, let's go into the ABS module. Let's take a look at the trouble codes. Well, damn, no wonder he's not feeling too well. We got a C1214, so system relay contacts, coil circuit open. And this is a relay that's directly inside of the ABS module. Okay, and then this here C1248, we have a red brake warning indicator light on, and I believe this here light will come on anytime we have an ABS uh, problem here. Okay, let's look at some live data. Let's go into here. All right. Now we had an issue with the relay, so we have to have a battery volt, so we have ignition volts to actu actuate this here relay inside. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. So we see we have ignition voltage, so we can see that. But do you see something else in there that's out of the ordinary Ordinary here? Switch system battery voltage, 0.4 volts. So that should be around the battery volt. So that's kind of confirming we have an issue. So what we need to do is get over there. I'm going to get this here left front wheel jacked up. Going to get the wheel off and then we'll get down here to this ABS module. Let's actually do a little check so the voltage is going to this module, make sure it's there. And if we have everything there, then we're probably going to have to do some exploratory surgery inside this ABS module. So let me get that all going here and I'll get back with you guys on that. All right, let's take a look at this uh, C1214. It says system relay contact a coil circuit open. Now if you look right up here, it says hot and run. It's going to go through the fuse, comes around, and you see right here we're going to the EBCM ignition positive volts. So this here B terminal that's up here on this uh, ABS module 
is going to get his supply bolts. All right, now that supply bolts, now let's take a look down here about when is this comes on. Let's get a little bit about the circuit description. Now the system relay is energized when the ignition is on. So we want to make sure that we have this here voltage. If we don't have that voltage, obviously it's not going to come on the internal relay. Uh, the system relay supplies voltage to the solenoid valves and the pump motor. This voltage is referred to as a system voltage. Okay, and what is it going to set? So right down in here, uh, this here code will set when the system voltage is less than 8 volts for 0.23 seconds. And I believe we saw that we had, what, like 0.4 volts. So obviously we don't have that voltage. Okay, so we need to make sure we've got that voltage. Now let's go back. Let's take another look at the internal diagram of the EBCM. Now here's that, here's that supply bolts. It's coming down here again on terminal B. Now that voltage is used to derive to get this voltage over here. If you notice this B plus, it shows this internally. So if we have the voltage here, and I'm going to also check this voltage here, battery supply volts. Or bat so this is going to be hot at all times and I'm going to check this module ground, so if we make sure that all of this is good, then we got a problem that's internal inside the EBCM. So basically, when the ignition switch is turned on, voltage is applied to here, and then that's going to switch these contacts over. Then the B plus is going to come down here, and it's going to supply all of these 12 solenoid valves here, and then these are all ground side switch. And also, it's going to be supplying that same B-plus voltage to this here pump motor. And you can also see that it is switched on the ground side, too. Okay, so now you, now you guys know what we're going to be up to. So if we're going to get down there, we're going to check these voltages. One other thing, we could just take a look at the uh, pinout on this here EBCM connector. So you see that this is a 29-pin connector up in here. And you also have this here, terminals on the bottom labeled A through G. And if we come down, we can see what's what. We can see we got, we're going to check this wire. We're going to check this wire. That's the one that's the most important. That's the one coming off the ignition switch. And also we come down here on the F terminal. We can see that's going to be for the ground on the module. So we're going to check those and uh, see what that comes up with. All right, this is the ABS module up here. Here's a connector. I have it unplugged. And what we're going to do is I have, the, I have the ground lead of the test light. I have it connected up over here on terminal F. So I'm going to be checking the ground at the same time. I'm also going to be checking the B plus coming down here, which will be hot all times. And then this one over here is going to be ignition. So this will only be hot when I got the ignition switch on, which I do now. So let's check the B plus first. Ooh, nice. See, nice That's and good. bright. Yep. Let's also check ignition. Yeah, and that too. one's good. So this here ABS module has all the voltages that it needs. So the ground's good, B plus is good, ignition voltage is good. So it looks like we have an issue inside the module. So we have several options here. Now normally this thing is made to be replaced and then you have to program it. Or you can go to the junkyard, you can get one, you can also take it off, you can send it off to an independent company and they can actually work on it and they'll repair it probably around about 150 bucks. Or maybe we can just go inside this thing and take a look inside and see what, what's going on. So let me get back with you on it and uh, maybe we might just go inside here. All right. All right guys, now isn't this very interesting? Now, this, this problem was intermittent. I didn't mention that before. It would come, it would go. So that's why I was thinking maybe it was a bad connection inside this here ABS module. You know, with a, maybe it's a cracked PC board. Well, look right here. You see, I have the ignition switch on, and now we have a switch system battery voltage is now back up. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to tap on this ABS module, and I'm going to see if this here voltage will actually drop out. Now I looked at the connector, I looked at the pins, everything looked fine, I didn't see any issue there. There we go. There we go. So now the voltage dropped out when I tapped on the module here.
but now it won't come back. Okay, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take this here module off here. All right, guys, I got this here ABS module off. It's got six screws here, T20. Okay, now let me show you what we got here. This is the way it's mounted on there. That's the screws right here, six of them, T20. And here's the back side, so you can see the solenoid coils here for the valves. Okay. The problem is, we're pretty sure that there's a break, broken connection, cold solder joint. But I need to get this cover off. Now there's four screws here. T15 will take care of that. No problem. You can get you can get the screws out. The problem comes in in getting this cover off. Now this cover is recessed, it has a recessed metal flange all the way around, it fits down, and on top of that there's this silicone goop caulk, and I, and I timed myself because I figured that this thing was going to be hell to get off of here. Now I could probably get it off, but I'll probably have to damage it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to send this thing off, I'm going to send it off to a company and let them repair it. They have the fixtures, the jigs, that they can actually get this cover off so we're gonna let them take care of it they do not want this thing to be repaired you know so I gave it a good shot I was hoping we could get in there to get this cover off but I couldn't it is it is like really welded on there and I gave it all I shot you can see I got the screwdriver around here I took the utility knife I went around here I cut the silicone all the way around take a screwdriver try to pry it apart try to beat it off it will not budge anywhere. So anyway, I was a little bit disappointed in that. So anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to send it off and let's see what we got. Alright, so we'll catch you guys in the next shot when we get ready to put this thing back on. Okay, so we got our module back. So I've already opened up the box, just to save us some time. This way you can kind of see how it's packaged up. And let's kind of see what it says here. So, uh, so they reflow the solder solenoid and ABS relay on the PC board. And you can see that the module has a five-year warranty. Okay? Alright. So they packaged it up pretty good. Got this styrofoam type uh, packaging here. Comes into this, uh, they package it, put it in this anti-static bag. Okay. Got a little rubber band around there. They cleaned up the module, resealed it. Okay. And there we go. And then of course we got another styrofoam packaging type in there. So they packaged it up uh, pretty good. So let's get this thing on the car. Oh, and by the way, for you guys that's interested of where I sent this module off to to get it repaired, it was uh, modulemaster.com. I'll put a link in the description below this video if you're interested. Alright, we got it bolted on, so let's uh, turn it on and see what it does. Now, hopefully there won't be too much glare here. Now, if all is well and this ABS module is uh, corrected, uh, we should not see these traction light, the ABS light, or the brake warning light. When you turn on the ignition, the ABS does a self-diagnostics internally. And if uh, all is well there, then uh, it should not be turning on any lights. Otherwise, it'll bring these lights back up. So let's see what we got. All right, so give it a few seconds. Hopefully, it, yep, there to go. So we see that the ABS lights out, traction lights out. You remember the brake warning light was down in here, so it's out also. That looks good. So I think what we'll do is we'll get the scan tool on next and uh, take another look at the uh, PID there. All right, let's take a look at these here data PIDs, especially that switch system battery voltage. So now we got 10.97. Voltage is a little bit low because, you know, this car's been sitting for a little while. But looks okay. All right. All right, so let's get out of this here, and let's go back and when I look at our trouble codes. Now, usually with ABS systems, that when you fix a problem, you remember it on the, on the initial 
turn on the key, it runs the diagnostics, and if you have a problem, it's going to turn on those lights. Otherwise, if you don't have a problem, you have no lights, and it should clear out the codes. So let's take a look, and let's see what that looks like. So we want to go into trouble codes, read codes, and you see right here, you remember the two codes that we have earlier? So those are gone. They cleared themselves out. So now we're left with a C1245, low tire pressure detected. In a case like this, when you have a code like that, you know, and of course, unless you reset it on the uh, driver information center, you know it'll come right back. And let's see, we can, we can prove that, see if that'll happen. Yes, I want to clear it out. Okay, they've been cleared. We go back, we read the codes, and you see it comes right back. Okay, so no big deal there. So we took care of what we wanted to take care of. So let's get out of this and let's go back to the uh, back to the home screen, basically, and that is take care of that. All right, guys, that's it. That wraps this video up. Not too big a deal on this one. So. Uh, Hope you learned something on this one here if you run across those codes if you get those codes usually it's going to be internal abs uh, module problems there but at least you have several options there to go through so you guys take care and we'll see you in the next one